What's up everybody? I wanna do a lesson tackling the two main problems. It seems like there's phobias, there are fears that people have when they're just getting into pentatonic soloing and improvised playing, and that is the fear of repeating and the fear of leaving space, all right? And uh, I see that all the time when we usually get here. If I put on this backing track, we'll get this. And I know I do this example a lot. It doesn't take very long before this starts going nowhere. Now, if you're not used to leaving space, coming up with a nice core rhythmic phrase, um, and, and doing nice repeating um, motifs that people can, can digest, if you're not used to doing that, you're gonna go even further away from that, and it just ends up like kind of diluting and watering down your solo and we wanna get a nice core to it. Now, this isn't going to be a rhythmic phrasing lesson. I do have one. I will try to put that video in, um, in, in, this, um, in this description so that you guys can check that one out as well. These, these two videos will couple very, very well with each other. Um, so I have a slow blues track in A going on, A pentatonic, that's, that's my go-to for these lessons right now because it's nice and easy. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, an exercise where we play for one measure and then have one measure of rest, all right? And then one measure, one measure of rest, and every now and then I will change things when we get to the five chord, all right? And you'll see that also in the rhythmic phrasing um, lesson as well. So I'm gonna put this on. The best part about having a slow blues is it's easy to follow the timing while you're improvising, so you can kind of count along a little bit and you won't lose it, like a faster shuffle might be a little bit more difficult. So just something like this, nice and easy. Three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Now, if you want to make it easier than that, that is totally fine. The point is to leave the space there. So now, so that is generally how I would do this exercise. Now, if I wanna make it way easier and just focus on those three notes, I can do that as well. Still same thing. All right, so that is what I want you guys to focus on. I don't wanna to have to go through too many of those. Um, now, there's, there's a, a component to that that I wanna add, and that is something else that can be very difficult to do if you're used to, to kind of this, this like, almost like machine gun playing where it just, right? What happens is it's just too much, it's, it's, it's almost like it, it's rhythmically too much of the same, so we're not getting anything that we can really hold on to as a listener. And also, the notes now, because the notes aren't really repeating, only the rhythm is, now there's like really nothing going on. And uh, it just, like I always say, it just sounds like a car, you know, that has no driver, just like no direction. So now, what I was also doing in those examples, for the most part, was not playing on the one. All right, so this is a completely different exercise, and if you want to combine the two like I was doing in the example, for the most part, is just put this on, and you count along, all right, because this is, this is a huge exercise. I love using this with my students. One, two, three. One. Right, and, and that is a little bit more of like a, uh, kind of like a training thing. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're playing, it's just trying to stay away from the one. So I want you guys to try taking those two concepts and putting them together. Now the very, very last thing is going to be, this is going to be a little bit different. The other two are kind of like, like a little bit of like training, you know? I'm really getting used to, to holding onto that space 
and then uh, getting used to not always playing on the one, which just is gonna vary up your rhythms. So the last part is a little bit freeing, and, and what I mean by that is we wanna vary up note duration, just like this, right? All the notes are coming out the same, so if we can vary up the note duration drastically, I want it to be so drastic, that is going to change um, how these licks are coming across and with the first two exercises, it's going to change your guitar solos so much right away if you can start putting all three of these concepts together. So we have something like this. Right? Two quick notes and one very long note. It, just that idea alone seems to be difficult for people to get right away. It's just something that they're not hearing. And that ends up being more about the rhythm and the very in the rhythm in each short lick then it really is about the note choice. And in a lot of the blues lessons, which, and if you're on YouTube right now or, or Facebook, as you're progressing, go back and look at all the different variations that we're doing um, just within an A pentatonic. Um, and you're gonna notice that the, uh, the note choice really only matters when we're talking about tension and resolution, which is in another blues lesson. Um, other than that, we really want to build a strong variation when it comes down to the rhythm rather than the note choice. And the direction that people start taking is when they get this, right, no direction, they think they have to add more to it. And that, like I was saying before, that kind of waters it down when really this is what is going to make your guitar solos awesome. Now, the very final example, I want to do this. I have a video, it was a, it was a Facebook Live that I did where I was teaching a brand new guitar class. Nobody had ever touched a guitar before. Um, and it was in Compton when I was out in LA. And uh, this girl grabbed the guitar and we were just going through, we were just using the five and the eighth fret of the bottom string, that was it. And I was trying to get them to play, you know, a couple fives and a couple eights and maybe change the rhythm a little bit. We were doing like half notes, uh, we were doing quarter notes and half notes and she just did this. That was it. And then came back. Right? That was it. And I thought that was awesome because I keep getting them to, uh, I was just guiding them into different note variations, you know, and not just going back and forth. Like, yeah, you could play two eights in a row, you could play two fives in a row. And for some reason, she just thought that one eight was it and just left it. And I thought that was so creative because that is something that guitar players tend not to do. Now, taking that example into something to a level that you guys are probably at, if you go to a blues jam, and you pulled in with that, any serious blues player is going to look at you a lot differently than if you had right because it's that, that level of maturity um, in in the playing so something I wanted to get across guys I hope you like this lesson as well um, if you are on YouTube or Facebook the last bunch of videos that I did uh, go right along with this and I'm gonna try to put the other um, videos, the, uh, the tension and uh, release or the, the rhythmic uh, phrasing video in the description. Thank you guys. Have a good day.